Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, per your request of the last LMTV video, you guys were asking about uh, part numbers and how did I do this and how did I do that. And we're also going to touch on uh, tuning for the S300 Turbo, the 10R6402 Cat Turbo. And um, we'll just go over that a little bit. Uh, there was something else I was going to tell you. I forgot what it was, but I'll probably remember it as we're talking about the truck here. So let's head out to the truck. So yesterday, after I was done doing the install, uh, I went on like a... I got to set the phone down <laughs> to get up here. As I was saying... <clears throat> I went on like a two hour drive to test everything, make sure there were no leaks and um, this clamp I forgot to tighten down. So it was making like a whistling noise when the boost was hitting, but it wasn't coming out because it was just enough to catch the lip of this. Um, and then my pack brake of all things was just making an awful hissing noise and I found out that the V-band clamps that I had on there were probably a little worn out past their service limit. So this morning I went through and replaced those, um, got everything lined back up correctly, um, and the hissing sound is back to the normal uh, butterfly valve plate hissing sound that the pack brake typically makes. Um, so anyhow, uh, I digress. Let's first go into what I did to get the coolant, uh, some of you guys were asking about that, through the turbo here. Uh, obviously, you have the original uh, oil lines. Those all match up perfect. Uh, but you have to add coolant lines if you've got a 3116. So basically what I did is I teed into the supply line going back to my uh, Eberspotcher uh, on both the supply from the block and the return back to the thermostat housing. So the threads inside the turbo itself are 3 quarter 16 so any dash 8 an fitting will go on here and then you can adapt it to whatever you want in my case I used a uh, dash 8 to a male flare uh, number 10 an to a 90 to a 5 8 hose barb that just ties right into the 5 8 hose so that part was easy back here it's a little more convoluted I used um, Three quarters, 16 um, male hose barb, which I think is a half inch um, ORB is what they call it in the hydraulic field. So I used a half inch O-ring boss, male O-ring boss, to a, a 6AN or JIC6 half inch hose. That leads, it's just basically, it's a flame resistant hydraulic hose. I think it was about, I don't know, 16 inches long that I have laying around. Comes up here into the thermostat housing, which this is a half inch NPT to a 6AN or 6JIC um, half inch. So everything here, and then I just use a T to come off of here and supply both of those. So. The original loop that was coming through here, the convoluted, I don't know why they had it spread out that far, but um, I basically just did a 90 straight down into it with a, a male hose barb attached to that to a little section of 5 8 hose. Um, that goes down and ties into the original location. So this hose is uh, it's 5 8 thermoid hose. It's really high temperature rated silicone like a four ply hose i bought a whole roll of it years ago and i still have plenty of it left i used it for all the um eber spotcher and all of the um coolant lines going into the shelter and whatnot so that's where i got that um, as far as like the exhaust parts like the three-piece manifold i think what i'm going to do for that uh, you can see some of the part numbers here. So this one is 61, 
61-0915 and this middle one is 61-0914 and then this one is some weird number it's like 115 one, I, I can't remember it what I'll do is I'll leave links in the description to the eBay ads that I bought this but keep in mind they will be sold out but you'll be able to reference it for part numbers for everything um, this turbo is a 10R6402 um, alternatively you can look these up on the cat website if you were to buy all this stuff from the cat website it'd co cost you upwards of five thousand dollars which is ridiculous like i said i think i paid like 250 for all three of these pieces uh, 125 for the gasket and bolt kit which i'll leave a link to in the description i think there was a, quite a few more of those left uh, and then the turbo was 350 shipped so um, as far as tuning goes, uh, I want to talk about it, although I'm not going to do it yet for two reasons. I don't have another valve cover gasket, and I want to see what the behavior of the truck is a little more in depth um, on like a long trip where we're going up a really steep grade. I want to see how the truck behaves, and then uh, if I need to, I can add fuel to make up for the additional air that's being supplied to the engine now. One thing I noticed yesterday when I was driving around for a couple hours was that instead of the boost on the old 4R9815 turbo going to like 24, 23, 24 pounds, um, this new turbo peaks out at around 25 PSI. So there's about a 1 PSI difference. Um, not really a big deal. I don't think the motor's going to blow up or anything. Um, Something you want to keep in mind, I know the marine version of these have unlimited cooling because they're using lake water to go through the system. Um, that Therefore, they have a higher horsepower rating of 350 horsepower. Um, but one thing that I did some research on is if you go on the RV forms, there's a lot of motorhomes that had these motors on them. And they were the high horsepower versions. Highest ones I've seen for on-road use, there was a 300 horsepower version and a 320 horsepower version. And referencing, referencing part numbers, they use these turbos. So there's gotta be something to it. Um, I'm trying to get the data plate sticker off of one of those RV motors so that I could see what the reference is to the, um, the injector depth and all that stuff. I am not going to set the injector depth like five millimeters lower, whatever it ends up being. But I am going to reference the fuel screw, which is also on here, um, to see what the difference is. My guess is it's about a turn, one turn backwards on the fuel screw to get these dialed into this turbo. That's my guess. Now, if you have the 290 horsepower version of this motor already, it's going to have the 4R9815 turbo and the... 4R9040 governor that's on it that governor has a cam in it that provides linear fueling for that particular turbo I believe the motorhomes have that exact same governor because there's such a small difference between this and the 4R9815 aside from quicker spooling and um, more efficient um, scavenging of the exhaust gases to get in and out um, whereas the 4R9815 is kind of a bottleneck in this whole process along with the original Gen 1 manifold um, this Gen 2 manifold flows a lot better than the original one um, so that kind of comes into play because one of the fears of this motor that a lot of people have is the uh, valves are not up to the task of handling that much more power. However, um, if I digress back to what I was saying about the motorhomes that have these engines in them that are past 300 horsepower from CAT, um, that would prove to be uh, an incorrect statement. So I know there's more power available in these engines. Um, I guess it's just based on what you want to do. Now, if you have the 290 horsepower version of this motor and your original turbo goes out, this is a great replacement. It's drop in. You can install it and just drive and, and be fine. You're going you're gonna to end up with the same horsepower because you're not adding or taking away any fuel. You're just adding a little bit more air, so your EGTs are going to come down a little bit. Um, 
If you want to add more power, alternatively, you can take the valve cover off. There's a fueling screw that sits right here that's covered up by a small clip. So you've got to take one of the rocker or our camshaft um, bolts out. I'm sorry, the rock, one of the rocker bolts out and take that clip off and get to this um, screw. It's got a two millimeter Allen head and an eight millimeter lock nut on it. And then you would back that out a turn or two or however much you want to do based on um, the power levels you want. Now, if you get carried away with that, yes, some of these engines were tuned all the way up to 600 horsepower, but the life expectancy on them was drastically reduced. So I look at it this way. Anytime you make a horsepower upgrade, um, you're going to want to make sure that everything else is dialed in. You don't have any boost leaks. You don't have any uh, intake issues. You don't have a failing uh, EGT probe that's going to get eaten by the turbo. You know, all these things come into play that could cause damage to the engine. Um, like I said, I want to drive the truck around a lot more to see what the behavior is now to verify that, yes, in fact, maybe we could do half a turn or one turn backwards on that fueling screw to get a little bit more fuel and a little bit more power. But uh, as far as the test drive went yesterday, is there a noticeable difference? Absolutely there is. The, um, the turbo spools up quicker. Um, you get to boost a lot sooner and you're getting an extra one or two pounds of boost just by swapping this turbo out and going to uh, an upgraded manifold uh, and a higher flowing turbo that's more updated easily. Uh, you can get more parts for these if something does go wrong and it's not such a bottleneck in the entire system for this motor. But um, yeah, like I said, I'll leave links in the description for as much of this stuff as I bought so you could get some part numbers off of it. And then I hopefully I covered this enough to where you can come up with some parts and pieces to get the same exact setup going here. Um, it's really not that difficult. It's just time consuming. It probably took me seven or eight hours yesterday to get this whole thing taken care of. And that was including spending an hour getting a broken bolt out of the block there where I had to weld a couple nuts on there. <laughs> But uh, I think other than that, that's probably going to be it for this episode today, guys. If you have any other questions, I will do my best to answer them if you leave them in the comment section. Um, alternatively, uh, the, the LMTV Facebook group that I admin um, has a lot of great information in there. And a lot of people are very knowledgeable on these trucks. More knowledgeable than I am at times. So... Um, you can always ask questions on there and you can always use the search function as well to see if the topic has been covered before. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe, taking care of each other. And as always, I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.